Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel's Making with Marilyn. Now I know this is kind of a weird camera angle for me, but I wanted you to see what I'm gonna make in this video. Now I'm gonna show you the materials I'll use, then we'll get on the computer. I'll show you the design in Silhouette Business Edition. Then I'm gonna show you how I take it into Cricut, cut it, and put it together. So before I start on the shirt that I'm gonna make tonight, I wanna show you some shirts real quickly. I started off the new year, or actually the end of last year, making some Valentine's Day designs. And so this is a Cupid. And then I also made this template. It just says love. And if you don't like pinks and reds, you can do this in any color you want. I think this turned out beautiful in the blues. So then I turned my attention to springtime designs and springtime colors. So here's a couple of shirts that I've made recently. Live in Full Bloom and bloom where you are planted. And for these, I started using some new spring colors, and these are opal rhinestones. Then in addition to the opals, I put violet volcano on the petals of this flower, and they're right here. Now after springtime, you know, it is a huge wedding season. And so tonight, on a black t-shirt, I'm gonna make a wedding design, and it's really a bride design. And for that, I'm gonna use these rose gold metallic rhinestones and I get all these rhinestones from the baby's booty and I'll put a link to her website in the video description. She's getting ready to start a buy-in at the end of January but if you're watching this after that she does one almost every month. So in addition to the copper metallic or the rose gold metallic I'm going to use Labrador and these are a silver metallic. They look like diamonds. And then in the last part of the design, you could use any color you want. Now I'm going to use red because that kind of symbolizes love. But if you're making this for a bride, you might find out what color her wedding colors are. If they're pink, you can make this last part in pink. If they're green, make it in green. The last part of this design could be any color you want. And actually the other two parts could too. So things I'll use to make the design, I actually made it, or I designed it, in Silhouette Business Edition. I'm gonna cut it on this flock. I'm gonna cut it with my Cricut Maker. Once I've cut it and brushed the rhinestones in, then I'm gonna use some transfer tape. Now this is a used piece, but I'm gonna use this again today. To brush my rhinestones into the template, I'm gonna use this little paint edger brush. And then if I need to move any, which I probably will, I'll use this little rhinestone picker tool. Then I like to store my mats on these little chopping mats. Now you can get these at the Dollar Tree store, but I actually ordered these off of Amazon. They're larger, and actually right now they're less expensive. So I have a blank one for that. So the next thing I want to do is show you this design, bring it into Cricut Design Space, show you the things you have to watch for, then we're going to watch it cut. Now I might as well get my rhinestone flock put on my mat though so that once I get into Cricut, we can just keep moving forward. Now this mat is old and worn. It doesn't have a lot of sticky on it. The way I use my flock is I remove the paper backing. If you're gonna use it without the paper backing, then your mat doesn't need to be real sticky because the back of your flock is sticky. If, however, you're gonna cut with the backing on, your mat probably needs to be stickier because this backing really needs to stay put so that when the Cricut is cutting it, it's not shifting around on your mat. Now here's a picture of the design that we're gonna make tonight. And I designed this in Silhouette Business Edition. There's a couple of versions of Silhouette that has a rhinestone template feature, but I need to save my designs as SVGs because I cut on a Cricut. And the only version that does that is the Silhouette Business Edition. Now the black rectangle you see back here is not part of the design. I simply have it on here right now so that you can see this design. But let's go ahead and get rid of that. Now when I click on this, this whole design is grouped together. It has three objects in it. So if I hit object and ungroup, you can see I could cut this separate, the ring separate, and the word misses separate. I'm going to go ahead and group those back together because I want to see the size of my grouped image. You can see right here, it's 8.795 inches wide. Notice 
That's in the file name. And it's 9.796 tall. That's also in the file name. That's really helpful so that when you take it into Cricut, you make sure it's the right size. If it's not the right size, then those holes are not going to be the correct size for your rhinestones to brush into. All right, let's go ahead and close this. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up Cricut. The first thing I want to do is say Upload, Upload Image, and then I could either click Browse and find it, or I see it on my desktop, I'll just drag it over. It's already an SVG, so I just say Upload. Now that it's in my Uploads, I click on it and I say Add to Canvas. Now many, many, many times these do not come into Cricut the right size. That's just the nature of it. I uploaded this earlier and it actually did, so we'll see if it does this time. Okay, it came in down here. Okay, that is so funny because earlier it came in at the right size. Now look, it's way too small. Remember, my width was supposed to be 8.795. So the first thing I do before I ungroup this or anything is I make sure this is locked. Then I change it to the correct width. Now when I hit enter, the height should change and it should be the correct size. All right, so 9.796. Let me look in the file name. 9.796. So it is good to go. Now at this time, if I wanted to move these around on my mat so that they're cutting separately, just to make brushing in the stones a little easier, I could. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave them grouped together. And actually, so that they stay like this, I'm going to go ahead and select all three things and say attach. When I do that, they're going to change the same color. Now let me go back. I see one little thing I want to move. So I am going to have to ungroup it, and I just want this, and I'm just going to slightly move it away so I don't accidentally get those too close. I think it'll cut better. So now I can go ahead and select all three things, and I'm ready to attach them, and it's going to cut just like this. So I'll go ahead and say make it, and then I like to move mine over so I have some flock on each side. And then I cut my flock at 11 inches tall so I can actually move it down so that it's just a little bit more centered. Now I'll click continue. And then I'm going to say browse all materials because I have my own rhinestone flock setting. I have a setting for no backing and a setting for backing. And because I showed it once in a video, I actually have a second one. But I'm going to select this rhinestone flock, no backing, and that's a pressure of, I believe it's 340. I'll check to make sure. Well, let's just look now. You go to material settings, and then I can go down here to rhinestone. All right, rhinestone flock, no backing. Mine's set for a pressure of 340, and the double cut is off. I don't want it to cut twice. I'm going to use the fine point blade. Now that setting might work for you on a Cricut Maker or it might not. Maybe do some little test cuts on flock, start with that, and then adjust as you need to. Not everyone's machines are the same, not everyone's blades are the same, so you really have to experiment and come up with your own settings. Okay, so I'm picking that, I'll say done. I've already cleaned my blade off and we're ready to cut. All right, so let's go ahead and see how the Cricut did on this. Now, I've had really good luck with mine, and usually it cuts very, very well. And it looks like this is no different. Now, you do want to be careful. You don't want to stretch it too much and pull those holes or pull the circles so that they become ovals. 
So instead of continuing to pull from that way, I'm going to go ahead and start pulling from each corner. Now looking at that, it doesn't look like I have a single circle that I need to peel out. If you do, you can just pull them out with your fingers. It's not a huge ordeal, but it's really good when you can get all or most of the circles to stay on your mat. Now here's where that chopping mat comes into play. And the thing I love about these are they're larger than the ones that you can get at the Dollar Tree store. The ones that you get at the Dollar Tree store, I think, I'm not 100% sure, I think they're like 11 by 14. And these are more like 12 by 15, I think. And I tend to make some big templates. And the templates fit on these mats, whereas some of my templates just don't fit on the Dollar Tree mats. So I love these, and I will put a link to these in the video description. All right, that looks cute. Now remember when I was in Cricut, I said you can ungroup them and move these things apart so that you don't have to deal with any of this. But I like to save the flock because it's expensive. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tape off right there and brush this set in first. Now for that, I'm going to use this Labrador because the Labrador, again, they look like diamonds. They are so gorgeous. They're a metallic stone. If you don't use those, you could easily use the crystal, crystal AB, or really anything you want. Use your imagination. Do something the way you like it, or something the way the bride likes it. So I'm gonna dump some of those out. Then I'll take my paint trim brush, just go in circular motions, and they fall into those holes. Now you might have some holes that don't have stones in them. You might have some holes that have them upside down. We're going to take a look at that here in just a minute. All right, let's brush the extra ones off. Now when I brush these off, I'm not using a lot of downward pressure. I'm mainly just using the weight of the brush, maybe slightly more than the weight of the brush. All right, I see a few holes. Some people can get all those filled in. I'm not that good. So I take my little rhinestone picker tool and just fill them in. Now this is a little tool that I got off of Amazon. They're really inexpensive and you can buy replacements of this wax tip. All right, I have a couple of extra stones here. Look how many extra stones I dumped on there. I typically do that. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So this transfer tape is KTM Mask. I get it from Heat Transfer Warehouse. I love it. I love it so much more than the original tape that I used off of Amazon. Now I need to make sure I have it to where when I'm ready to pick up the ring, I have enough excess room. All right, so I'm just gonna rub those so that they make good contact with the transfer tape. Now you can use this transfer tape multiple times, and I think I have an extra stone there. Not a big deal. I can take that out with tweezers before I press it. And oftentimes, you'll notice things like that once you turn your tape over and you look at it from the back. All right, I'm second guessing whether I should use this. I really had to piece this together. And it's a little lumpy and a little bumpy. So I think I'm gonna change the course that I'm going. I'll probably just cut this out, have it separate, and use other transfer tape for the ring. I don't want it to be lumpy, because then your spacing is gonna be off. All right, let's go ahead and pull these up. I'm going to pull them up slowly, and before I pick it all the way up, 
I'll make sure they've all come up. Otherwise, I can set it back down, push on the front, and do it again. Okay, so from the back side, I see I have a couple of problems. And so I'll take a minute to fix that, and then we'll move on. Okay, so after fixing that, I want to lay that back down. I feel like I still have some type of issue. So I'm going to lay that back down, push those back in the holes, and see what's going on. Okay, I do have an extra stone right there. So I did a pretty poor job <laughs> of brushing these in and getting it ready. So take your time, don't rush like I did. Really stand over it, put your head over it, put it straight over it. In my case, I'd have my head in the camera. But be sure and check all of this before you press it on your shirt. Because once you press it on your shirt, it's hard to fix. And right now, even though it takes a little extra time, it's pretty easy to fix. All right, I'm convinced I finally have that right. So we'll go ahead and move on to the ring part. Now this time I'll just pick up my tape and this painter's tape, you can put it down, pick it up. It's not gonna cause a problem with your flock. So I'll put that there. Now just like the diamonds, you can use whatever color you want. This is the rose gold. It's a metallic stone. I also have the arm dorado. It's more of a gold metallic stone. But even if you want to use crystal on this whole thing, you can. But this is a new color and I want to try it out. Now, I think I would be wise to go ahead and cover over the word misses. Now, I am going to follow my own advice, and I'm going to get my stones picked up before I move on. Now, my wedding band is actually a white gold. So if I were making this true to my wedding band, I wouldn't use these, but I want to see this color. And if you watch my videos, I'm not a big jewelry person. I don't even wear my wedding band all that often. I'm just kind of laying these around here because I don't want them to get inside. All right, so the same thing. I'm just going to kind of go in circular motions and let these stones fall down in those holes. I'm excited to see what this rose gold is going to look like on a black t-shirt. I think it's going to be fabulous. Then the other thing, while I'm brushing them in, let's talk about this. If you wanted to sell t shirt to a bride and her bridal party, you could always ungroup it, take the word Mrs. out, and then in HTV, because you want the bride to stand out. So in heat transfer vinyl, you could put bridesmaid or maid of honor or you could put their names on it, or you could put whatever you want, the date of the wedding. So even though this template says Mrs. and in the Etsy shop, I'm gonna have this file and then in the same product. So if you buy this, you'll get both of them. The other one will actually say bride. So you can pick whichever you want, or the bride can pick whichever she wants. There's so many things you could do with this. And so, for example, this summer, my husband and I will have been married 30 years. And so I'm going to put something down here that says 30 years and going strong, or I don't know, something cheesy like that. All right, I see an extra one right there. I'm just going to kind of follow along visually 
and it looks like everything else is okay. Now this transfer tape's been used quite a bit. I can tell because I see fuzz from t-shirts on it. So I'm gonna press down just a little bit harder on this one so I make sure I get good adhesion between the stones and the transfer tape. Then again, I'll just pull it up slowly, make sure those stones come up. And then we have one more part to do, and that's just the word misses. So for this part, I'm going to use this red. Any color will do. You can use your bride's colors. You can use a real formal color. Again, you could just use crystal on the whole thing. That'd be gorgeous. But I want to set it off with a little bit of red. So I'm going to fast forward through this. I've seen this a couple times on this video. I'll pick this up and then we're going to put the shirt together. Now I've already preheated this to remove moisture and to get a nice flat surface. And I lint rolled it once. Let's go ahead and do that again, especially under where your design's going to go. Doesn't matter if there's lint out here, but you don't want the lint sticking out from under your rhinestones. Now to put this design together, I might use some parchment paper. We'll see. And the reason is, is because I want to go ahead and put my ring on first. And the issue is, do I want the ring centered and the diamond off-centered, or do I want the ring off-centered so that the whole design is centered? That's something you're going to have to decide. I'm going to go ahead and have this kind of off-centered so that my design overall is fairly centered. Let's see what it looks like. So the parchment paper makes it where your two pieces of transfer tape aren't going to stick together. Okay, so if I have my ring right there, then my diamond is up on my collar. So I need to move my ring down just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and press this on. I'm using a heat of 350 degrees for 12 seconds. Now if you're going to do this in multiple presses like I am, you don't necessarily have to go the full time each time. You definitely want to on the last time. Now if I'm lucky, I can get the misses and the diamond on together. Isn't that color beautiful? Look at that. I love it. Love, love, love it. All right, let me give that one more press and we'll call it good. Now with the stones that I buy from the baby's booty, she says, go ahead and peel these off while they're still hot. So I do. And look at that. That is beautiful. 
I love that. And what bride wouldn't like to wear this out to her bachelorette party or a bridal shower or just out with her friends, out with her hubby? That is so cute. Now, don't forget, I'm going to put links to a bunch of this stuff in the video description. I'm going to put a link to the Baby's Booties buy-in down there. And if you're interested in learning more about bling, make sure you've subscribed to the channel, you've clicked the bell, and you've selected the all notification. That way you don't miss any videos I upload. One last look, and if you're interested in this rhinestone template or others that I might have, I also have a link to my Etsy shop. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.